Okay, this is lesson uh, lesson one, um, seventh grade, and uh, this one is on arithmetic with whole numbers and money, and then also with variables and evaluation. Okay. Okay, the first thing I want you to understand is that um, we have counting numbers. And counting numbers are just normal numbers. You would just, like if you were counting, you would just start going one, two, three, four, five. But there's also numbers called whole numbers. Now, the only difference is, is you also include a zero in that. Okay? And the reason why we're calling them whole numbers is they make up whole amounts. So, for example, I have here one whole pen and one whole pill bottle. So we have two whole somethings. And so these are whole numbers, okay? Now, um, there's something called consecutive, and this is something I want you to write down. Consecutive, it's a weird um, name, but consecutive numbers are numbers that come after each other. So um, in a number sequence, it would look like one, two, three, four, five, they're all consecutively, they come right after each other. Or if we were later on in counting, we would say 28, 29, 30. Those would be consecutive because they come one after the other, okay? Can you think of some counting numbers that are consecutive? Mm -hmm. um, one, two, three. Just any number, I mean, so consecutive means 28, 29, 30. Mm -hmm. They come right after each other. Uh, 789. 789. Great. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is money. All right. And oftentimes with money, we see it written on two, di two different ways. Can you tell me one way that you see it? How would you see money written? In a dollar sign? Yes, using a dollar sign. So if I were to write one dollar and 50 cents, that's how you would see it, okay? But it would be incorrect if we were to put it like this, okay? So you do not want to have dollar and cent in the same thing, okay? Now, I could say 50 cents like that, or I could say 50 cents like that, but you would not put a decimal and a cent together, okay? It would be incorrect. So you could either do 50 cents like this, or you could do 50 cents like this, okay? But never both. Now, um, do you know, remember what this is called? Decimal. Decimal point, good job. Okay, now, if we were, we're gonna move into adding, okay? And so if we have a number plus a number, do you remember what these two are called? No? no. Not at all? It's called an add-end. Makes pretty sense because yeah. you're adding. Add-end plus add-end. Do you remember what the answer to an adding problem is called? We haven't done this in a long time. No. Nope. nope, okay, so it is the sum. Remember that now? Yeah, the answer to an adding problem is called sum. So it's add-end plus add-end equals sum. Now, let's let's take some uh, a problem. So if I said 36 plus 52. Okay, you would add those up, just like we always do. Okay, six plus two is eight, five plus three is eight. Okay, and that would be your answer or your sum. Add-end plus add-end equals the sum. All right, let me give you a little bit harder one to do. Okay, and here's what it's gonna look like. Let's use our money knowledge that we were doing a while ago. A dollar, 45 plus six dollars plus eight cents. Now this one's tricky because it all depends on how you're going to set this up. Okay? Isaac, can you tell me how you would set this up? Uh, I do. I put the eight cents in a dollar, dollar farm. So it would be 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Very good. And I like because this is eight cents. We wouldn't want the eight to go here because that would mean there's eight dimes, okay? Because this is our tenth spot. So we would want eight cents to go here, and then what else, Isaac? And then lock them up to down. Okay. 6.00. 6.00. Very good. So he took the dollar, six dollars, 
and he put it right here, okay? And the decimal always comes after a number, even if you can't see it, okay? Now, when you're working with cents, it's a little different, and he did that one just right. Now, the last one you would just do like normal, $1.45. Then you would just add like normal. Eight plus five is what? 13. Okay, carry the one. Four plus one, five. And six plus one is seven. Okay, do you remember what to do with the decimals? Bring it down. Bring it down, very good. When you're adding or subtracting, you just bring down the decimal. But you have to make sure you are lining up the decimal. Hopefully you saw that I did that, okay? So we got add-ins and sum. And so the final answer would be $7.53. All right. Let's move to subtraction problems, okay? And this one you may not remember as well, okay? There's something minus something equals something, okay? So what that would look like is, let's say I had 10 minus four equals six, all right? The very top one, the one that we're taking away from, so we're taking four from this, this sign right here means, is a subtraction sign that means take away. So if we're taking four from 10, the 10 is called the menu end. The one you are minusing from, menu end. And that's how you would spell that, okay? This one is called the menu end, okay? And remember, that's the one you are minusing from, all right? The second one, the number that you are using to take away from is called the subtract end, okay? Do you remember this at all? A little bit? No? Okay, so we've got menu in and subtrahend. Okay? Do you remember what the answer is? Um, what should we do? Divid difference. Difference. Okay? All right. So we've got the menu end, which is the one we're minusing from, and the subtrahend, which is the one being subtracted. That's the way I like to remember that. Menu end is the one we're minusing, taking away from, and the subtrahend is the one being subtracted. We're subtracting four. So it always will help you remember it that way. Okay, and the answer to a subtraction problem is called the difference. Now, let's do a problem that's a little bit harder than that, okay? So for example, if I said $5 minus 25 cents. Now, we have to do something that we did the last problem, okay? What do I need to do with the $5? Uh, 5.00. Very good. So I put the dollar side 5.00, okay? And then I'm taking away how much? 25 cents. Okay, and how would I make that look? Uh, 0 0.25. 0 0.25, excellent, Isaac. Okay, so 25 cents, because it's not a whole number, it's just 25 cents, okay? So we have to put a zero in the dollar form because there are no dollars, no whole numbers. All right, so we have $5 minus 25 cents, okay? And if you just thought of that, you would realize that it's $4.75 because you would just take away a quarter. But let's actually do it mathematically, okay? All right, and this should be, you should already know how to subtract and all those things, so I'm not gonna be teaching on that. So five from 10 would be five. Two for nine would be seven. And zero from four, four, yep, would be four. Okay, so the answer would be four dollars and seventy-five cents. Feel like you understand? Yep. Good stuff. All right. Now we've done adding, we've done subtracting. Now we're going to look at multiplication. Okay. Now again, it's going to be something times something equals. Okay. So this is with multiplication. Okay. Do you happen to remember what these ones are called? Starts with an F. No. Factor times factor. And just like when we were doing the adding ones, you have the same name for the multiplying and the, divide, the, the um, adding. So it's factor times factor, just like add end plus add end. Okay, so they kind of are similar. Factor times factor equals, do you remember the answer to a multiplication problem? Starts with P. No. Product. Okay. The name of um, multiplication answer is called the product. So it's factor times factor equals your answer or your product, okay? Now, here are some ways that you're gonna see multiplication written out. 
Sometimes you'll see four times five like this. That's probably the first way you learned it. Okay, another way you'll see it, especially as you get older, with this little dot. Now the dot is not down at the bottom like a decimal, okay? It's in the middle and it's bigger, and it'll be like this. And that means the same thing. It means to multiply, okay? And then there's this way. Sometimes you'll see a five in parentheses and a four or another different numbers, okay? But what this means is when you see two numbers next to each other and there's a parentheses in between, that means to multiply as well, okay? And the answer for this problem would be what? 20. 20, excellent. Okay, so pretty simple, okay? But those are the different ways you will see it. Now, let's do one of these problems. Um, let's take, we'll do a little bit of money. $4.68 times 20. Now, there are two ways to work this problem, and hopefully you remember from last year, okay? So we're gonna take $4.68 and multiply it by 20. Now this is one way that you can do it, is just lining up the numbers, okay? Just like that. And then you would take zero times eight is zero, zero times six is zero, and zero times four is zero. Okay, that's a lot of zeros that you have to work with. You don't actually have to do it like that, but this is one way, okay? So then I go to the next number. Two times eight is 16. Six times two is 12, plus one is 13. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine. Now, I'm not teaching you how to multiply because you should have learned that um, last year as well, or two years ago, okay? And so then you add up these numbers. Zero, six plus zero is six, three plus zero is three, and nine long as there. Now, do you remember what we do down here with the decimal? Because we're working with decimals, therefore we know that we're going to have to have a decim decimal in the answer. Do you remember at all? Yeah, you. Um, the numbers after the decimal. Yes, so we have two numbers after the decimal. So that means you start always at the right, and because we have two spots, you're going to go one, two. So our final answer would be 9360. Okay, 9360. All right, now, there is another way, okay, and you can take and hang your zero. It's called the hanging zero, all right? And what that means is I would just put draw a line, okay? And so this is our problem, 4.68, and then I would hang my zero on the side, okay? And I'm just going to bring that down because that's exactly what you're going to do. And then you just have to use your 2 because it's outside of this <coughs> line and go 2 times 8 is 16, carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13, carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Okay, and when you get done, you just move that line right there, and this is your answer, but because you're working with decimal problems, okay, we take 1, 2, we're going to go 1, 2. So either way, you get the right answer, however you want to do it. Um, some like it one way and some like it the other. All right. Now, let's do, since we've talked about adding and then subtracting and then multiplying, now we're working with dividing, okay? And when you're dividing numbers, okay, and there's different ways, let me, let me talk about this real quick, there's different ways that you're going to see a division problem written, okay? There's actually three different ways, all right? Um, one way would be like 15 divided by 3, like that. Another way you will see it is 15 divided by 3. And the last way you will see it is 15 divided by 3. Okay? And most people prefer to see it this way because that's the way we put it in to perform the problem most of the time unless we just know it. Okay? Now, now that you know that, we're going to start with the number that you divide. Okay? And it's called the div dividend. Okay, and I'm going to use this method right here um, in the way of showing how to do it. Okay, so this would be like this, 15 divided by 3, okay, like we showed. Okay, this is dividend. The one you're using to divide with is called the divisor. All right, and then the answer to a division problem, do you remember? It's called quotient. Okay. Now, the way I remember these names is dividend is on the N side, okay? The divisor is the one you're dividing with, okay? And then the quotient is the answer. All right, so let's take a problem and do it. For example, 
$12.60 divided by 5. Okay, so this would be an example of using division. It would be um, five kids in the neighborhood worked together and somebody gave them $12.60. And so we were trying to figure out how much did each person get. So that's why you would divide it, dividing it out. Okay, and so when you're dividing, um, you go five goes into one, which doesn't work. Okay, so then we're going to go five goes into 12. Five goes into 12 two times, and we would get 10. And then you're going to subtract. Two, and this should all be completely, you should already know how to do this. Five goes into 26, five times. Five times five is 25, and then one, and then bring down the zero. Five goes into 10 two times. So, I'm gonna finish that out. Okay, so that's what it would look like to finish it out. But, notice we have a decimal, so what should I do with that? Bring it up. Slide it up. So our final answer would be $2.52. So each child would have gotten $2.52 um, if they did yard work and they paid $12.60. Okay? Now, um, let's talk about one last thing, all right? And it's called variables. It's kind of a strange name, okay? But all it means is that um, they're going to vary. So what I mean by that is um, you may see the letter X plus Y. Okay, and then they're going to say something like this, x equals 10 and y equals 5. Okay, and so if we were to put this into this variable problem, x equals 10, so we're going to put a 10 right here, and y equals 5, so we're going to put a 5 here. So 10 plus 5 equals 15. Now the reason why they're called variables is because the x and the y always changes. Then the x is not always going to be 10 and the y is not always going to be 5, so that's called called a variable, which means the number varies. It changes. All right? And then you would just evaluate it. So even if you saw it like this, x divided by y, okay? And if I said x is 15 and y is 3, what would be the answer? Oh, the... Let's try it. Five. Y is 3. Five. 15 divided by 3, excellent. The, the um, quotient would be 5. Excellent job. Okay, and so this is lesson one.